Facts First presents This photo is not edited. Look closer at the Brady Bunch blooper. The Brady Bunch was on the air from 1969 until 1974, but it remained on television in the form of reruns for decades, even today. On TV, they're the perfect family. Mike and Carol meet, get married, Mike's sons Greg, Peter, and Bobby, they become siblings to Carol's daughters, Marcia, Jan, and Cindy. They all live in a house together with their housekeeper Alice and their dog Tiger, don't want to forget about him, and they were a true American family. When the show ended, many of the secrets that they kept under wraps began to come out. Here are some of the Brady Bunch's biggest secrets you might not know about. Before we get into our video, jump down to the comments and let us know if you were a fan of the Brady Bunch. If so, who's your favorite character? Me personally, I think it's got to be Sam the Butcher. That guy just has a heart of gold. And come on, free meat. Who can beat that? Also, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. Casting the Children The show's creator and producer, Sherwood Schwartz, wanted to cast children that looked so much alike the audience would really believe that they were related. He tested over 464 boys and girls until he found the perfect children for the show. It was not easy, but he did find children that really did look like they were related. It's all in the name. Carol and Mike were obviously married before to have children of their own, and during the show it's revealed that Carol's maiden name is Tyler. Just before she and Mike got married, her name was Carol Martin, so that's a sneaky ploy by the writers to let viewers know that Carol was divorced, not widowed. Her maiden name, Tyler, was her last name until she married her first husband. Then her name was Carol Martin. After marrying Mike, she became Carol Brady. This theory is debatable based on the next secret I'm about to share. The D Word In the days when the Brady Bunch was filmed, divorce was taboo. It was not nearly as common as it is today, and the network didn't approve of the idea that Carol was a divorcee. So to make them happy, they made her a widow similar to Mike, whose wife passed away. The writers and producers wanted to get back at the network for stifling their creative genius, so they never mentioned Carol's late husband throughout the entire series. Widowed Parents During the late 60s and early 70s, television shows that featured widowed parents became a trend. In the case of The Brady Bunch, critics accused the creator and the writers of taking this controversial concept too far. They found it to be really sad that the parents of two families died, leaving six children all alone. In the show's defense, though, the network wouldn't allow either spouse to be divorced, and having children out of wedlock was not acceptable back then either, so making Carol and Mike a widow and widower, well, that was really their only option. Protecting the Children Robert Reed, who played Mike Brady, was known for causing problems on the set quite often. He'd fight with creator-producer Sherwood Schwartz and the writers. Reed was supposed to appear on the series finale, but after he argued with Schwartz about a scene that seemed ridiculous, he was written out of the final episode. He allowed Reed to remain on the set, however. He says that he didn't have him thrown off the set because he didn't want to do that in front of the children. Greatest TV Dad of All Time Despite Robert Reed's frequent arguments with Sherwood Schwartz, when it came time to play the loving and devoted father, he did it exceptionally well. His talent as an actor helped Mike Brady come alive. In fact, in 2004, TV Guide created a list of the greatest TV dads of all time, and Mike Brady was one of them. Royal Training Robert Reed was known to be a bit of a diva on set. He also had a reputation of being difficult to work with. And that could be due to his training. Robert Reed was a classically trained actor, and he graduated from the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London. Before landing the role of Mike Brady on The Brady Bunch, Robert had starred in the critically acclaimed legal series The Defenders. His classical training might have caused him to be a bit snobby, though, when it came to his scenes and his role. Florence Henderson's Upbringing Florence Henderson played the sweet and nurturing Carol Brady with ease. Her ability to portray a woman with a happy family was a stretch for Florence, though, since her upbringing was far different than the Brady family. She was the youngest of ten children, and her family was extremely poor, and her mother wanted to give her a better life. And that's how she got into acting. 
Her mother thought that if she could make something of herself in TV and film, it would break the cycle for her future grandchildren. And apparently Florence's mother was right. Her stardom did give her grandchildren a better and happier life than Florence had. Child Support Issues Recently, he was caught up in a court battle with his ex-girlfriend. He owed her child support after being ordered to pay $12,000 per month. Since he wasn't making the payments, she dragged him into court. There's no word on how the case turned out, but you can only hope that he has some Brady Bunch money stashed away somewhere. Florence's Depression On the show, Carol Brady was a happy wife and mother with a really positive attitude. In real life, though, things were very much different. During the show, she experienced severe bouts of depression. She also admitted to dealing with a dry marriage, which might be one of the reasons why she was so depressed. In 1984, she decided to file for divorce, and that was the beginning of her coming out of her depression. Later, she became a well-known relationship therapist. She was able to use her own lousy marriage to help others make their marriages better. Marsha vs. Jan when sisters are close in age, there is often some drama, jealousy, and sibling rivalry. This is especially true if one sister is prettier, smarter, or more popular. There was an episode of The Brady Bunch where Jan felt inferior to her sister because of her good looks, and the episode spilled into reality. Maureen McCormick was known as the pretty one, and Eve Plum was the not-so-pretty one. According to Susan Olsen, who played Cindy Brady, the on-screen sibling rivalry between those two started on-screen and it caused some serious tension between the two actresses off-screen. Five-Finger Discount While Maureen McCormick was filming The Brady Bunch, she was making some pretty good money and she could buy herself anything she wanted. Despite that, though, she would often shoplift. She says she didn't do it because she wanted things, she did it because she enjoyed the rush. The last time she went on a shoplifting spree, she was with her friend Susan Cowsill. Susan got caught, and Maureen hid in the car, letting Susan take the rap for the entire thing. Maureen says that it was the last time that she stole anything. Greg Hart's Mrs. Brady Barry Williams, the actor who plays Greg Brady, had a massive crush on Florence Henderson, who was playing his mother on the show. Florence says that while it was flattering, she would never have done anything with her on-screen son. First of all, yes, she was married, and it wasn't a happy marriage, but she took her vows seriously. Even if she weren't married, though, she would never have done anything. She says that she refused his advances for the sake of the show. No Kissing Allowed On The Brady Bunch, Greg Brady had plenty of girlfriends. Each episode, it was a different girl. Despite having a different girlfriend every week, Greg never got any lip action. Throughout the entire series, Greg Brady never got to kiss even a single girl. The only one of the Brady boys who did get an on-screen kiss was Bobby Brady. Unfortunately, it was not a good experience for the boy because he thought that the girl he kissed, Millicent, might have had the mumps. Nobody knows why Mike Lookaland was the only Brady boy to get to kiss a girl on screen. Sharing a Bed Years ago, showing a couple sharing a bed on TV was taboo. It was why many of the old TV shows had single beds for the couples. Many people think that the Bradys were the first couple to share a single bed, but that's not true. They were one of the first, but the actual first couple to share a bed was Mary Kay and Johnny Stearns in the 40s sitcom Mary Kay and Johnny. Not an instant hit the Brady Bunch wasn't always such a big hit. Due to low ratings early on, the show was only renewed for 13 episodes at a time. The ratings were great during the last season, and the network, they ordered a whole season at once. Although it wasn't an instant hit, the Brady Bunch became one of the most watched American sitcoms of all time. No toilets. Many scenes were shot in the Brady bathroom, and if you look closely, you'll never see a toilet in there. It was sort of an ongoing joke that the Bradys were so clean and wholesome they didn't need a toilet. Well, the real reason there was no toilet is that the network wouldn't allow it. They claimed that including a toilet in the bathroom set violated regulations. This photo's not edited. Look closely at that Brady Bunch blooper. No toilet. Cousin Oliver The show's ratings were dropping drastically. With Susan Olsen and Mike Lookaland getting older, the show no longer had an adorable kid for the audience to fall in love with. 
and that was when they brought on Cousin Oliver during the last season. They thought that a cute little kid could boost the ratings. Today, the term Cousin Oliver is often used in Hollywood when a character is brought on to a show to save a failing show. And it usually doesn't work. If you watched The Brady Bunch, what about Cousin Oliver? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Tell us in the comments and subscribe for more.